shooters. Out here at the range today, working on uh, another element in the world of the fundamentals of marksmanship. And today's lesson, so to speak, will be on trigger control. Trigger control, in its most basic sense, distilled to its single element, is nothing more than causing the gun to fire while the sights are aligned on the target. The interface between man and machine that makes that happen is a trigger. Gun is empty, gun is flared. So it's nothing more than having the gun go bang while the sights are aligned on the target using your trigger finger. Now, why do we have a problem with that? Why is it difficult for us to be able to master that, that most important of fundamentals, trigger control? Well, some of it is within your head, or a lot of it is within your head, that we don't want the gun to go bang. As, from a human standpoint, it makes noise and smoke, it's loud, and we don't want that to happen. But the conscious mind obviously wants it to happen, because we've bought the gun, we've paid for our range time, we've got ammunition, and we want to go shoot it. So you've got those two elements saying, don't make it go bang. Yeah, I want it to go bang. Don't make it go bang. And those two elements fight, and they build up in anticipation. And you tend to, at the last moment, Make the thing go hap make the, make the gun go back. It's kind of like pulling off a, a band-aid off a wound. You go up there, and some guys are the slow peelers, and most people just want to rip it off. So what do you do? You rip it off, and you just and you actually kind of go backwards and forwards and pull it off. Great big massive motion to pull off a little band-aid. Same thing happens when you're getting ready to break a shot. Quite often, again, the gun is empty. You'll put the gun out, and you'll at the last second give the trigger a good hard whack with the whole hand. Sometimes your whole body moves. It really comes down to being able to analyze why you do that. Or to train yourself to not do that. And truly, the most effective way to train yourself to not have problems with breaking shots on target or moving the gun while breaking those shots is dry fire. It doesn't cost anything. It's very inexpensive to dry fire your gun. Uh, almost any modern firearm can be dry fired at a considerable amount. Uh, it has been reported that some of the top shooters in the country are three to five times more dry fires than they are live fire. If you've got a top shooter in the country that's shooting 20, 25,000 rounds a year, he's shooting 75, or dry firing 75, 100,000 snaps a year. That's how they get good. You're training yourself to not be bothered by the noise and smoke, only by having your eyeball and your brain register that the sights are aligned and the hammer fell. The sights are aligned, and the hammer fell. The sights are aligned, and the hammer fell. So if you can train that into your head, you will produce those same results once the gun starts going bang for real. Eventually that starts to decay because you're making the gun go bang again. Uh, a couple things I want to go over really quickly is uh, there's a, a really nice little chart out there. A lot of helpful people on the internet have been spreading around, and it's the uh, right hand correction chart. And this is, was uh, created by the Army Marksmanship Unit, and they know something about bullseye shooting. Uh, and it's mostly designed around shooting one-handed, the traditional game of bullseye. And I'm going to do it left show you left-handed, because that's the camera's facing on that side, and I'm left-handed. So anyway, it was designed for 50-yard you know, shooting and 25-yard rapid fire at 3.5-inch 10 rings. So, with one hand on the gun, and in most of us are shooting practical games where we can have two hands on the gun, with one hand on the gun, every little thing makes a little bit of a difference. And this chart is mostly designed for being able to fix those little differences. In other words, they talk about the tip of the finger, a lot of finger, too much finger, or healing the gun, pushing the base of the gun into the trigger finger as you pull the trigger. Bang, bang. Or continue to grip more if you're right handed. And you see this a lot. A lot of uh, um, uh, striker-fired shooters recognize this uh, issue. They don't issue, you know, necessarily know why they do it, but here's why they do it. Uh, as they're trying to pull the heavier trigger pull on some of the striker-fired guns, instead of just pulling the trigger with their trigger finger only, they're pulling the trigger, finger, the trigger with the whole hand. They're trying to squeeze and they continue to apply more grip pressure as they pull the trigger. So instead of having one trigger finger, they've got a pile of them all pulling the trigger at once. So as they tend to curl their hand around, they tend to push the muzzle off target. If you're right-handed to the left, if you're left-handed to the right, and generally along with that goes a little bit of a down angle. 
And it's not a half an inch or an inch or two inches. It's five, six, eight, or ten inches. So if you're shooting that far off your mark, it has nothing to do with your sights being aligned. We do not miss our, our, our shots or our targets because our sights are misaligned. We misalign our sights with our trigger or in the, in the effort to break a shot, all the other things that happen. The anticipating of recoil, the pushing healing of the gun, the breaking of the wrist, the it's going bang. Uh, a lot of things happen mentally when you're trying to pull the trigger straight to the rear and cause the gun to go fire. So again, the chart is helpful if you're making, you need to make a small correction. It's very helpful if you're a bullseye shooter. Uh, Brian Zins, 13-time Camp Perry champion, probably no better bullseye shooter, shooter has ever walked the planet. Uh, again, 50-yard bullseyes, it's important. Every little thing makes a difference. For practical shooting, with two hands on the gun, you're shooting more generous targets and quickly. Good grip, as I talked about in my first video, really can mask and cover up a lot of these issues with uh, trigger control. But if it happened then, you really are recognizing the, the, uh, the two-pronged uh, good and bad, not necessarily evil and good, but good and bad in your head saying, don't go bang, I want it to go bang. Don't go bang, I want it to go bang. And it manifests itself in you, in the microseconds you're getting ready to pull the trigger, moving the gun off target. So again, we don't miss our shots. Because our sights are misaligned, we misalign our sights during the trigger pull by moving the gun off the target. The only way you can find out if you're doing that or not is through continuous and, and uh, repetitive dry fire. Top shooters dry fire several times to one over their live fire. One of the best dry fire resources you can get a hold of is Ben Steger. Um, several time production champion, arguably one of the best production, champion, uh, production shooters in the U.S. Um, perhaps the world, but that, that remains to be seen at the next the World Shoot. He's got a great video series out that explains and gives you fun practice regimens for dry firing. Dry fire a lot, understand why you make the mistakes you make. A small inch change here or then, you might want to change your approach to the trigger if you're making four or five, six inch difference in your impact. It's truly you. It's the mental to physical manifestations that are fighting each other before you break that shot. So I understand the desire to buy cool gadgets and new, new triggers and new sights and lighten your trigger, get your trigger really light. It's just a way to cover up and or mask a, a root cause, a, a fundamental deficiency in your ability to break a shot. The fundamentals of uh, marksmanship pay huge dividends once mastered. And the quest and the working your way through those fundamentals to mastery is a great journey. Get on that journey with me, work with me a little bit, and I'll try to help you become a better shooter. I really enjoy shooting, and you will too, the better you shoot. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Bye for now.